Hey, if you're a digital nomad or full-time travelers like we are, and you're looking to experience the history and the culture of the Czech Republic, well, before you pack your bags, let's talk about what you need to budget for a one month stay. Welcome, we're Joel and Michelle, the Wandering Hearts, and we're living a more abundant life through full-time travel. We're on a mission to help digital nomads, early retirees, and perhaps even someone like you to help incorporate slow travel or full-time travel into your work lifestyle or even retirement. So this episode is part of our Nomadic Abundance podcast. Uh, we've got a playlist on YouTube that you can check out, um, or you can also be able to find it on other places where you find podcasts here very shortly. So today we're actually going to be talking about cost of living for digital nomads, part-time expats, um, or even full-time travel couples like ourselves uh, who want to explore like the history and the food, uh, and just basically all the goodness that the Czech Republic has to offer. Uh, we actually spent a month living in the Czech Republic. Uh, we've kind of split between uh, Bruno and Prague and absolutely loved our time there. And we definitely highly recommend it. Um, but before we get into costs, we're going to uh, just want to give you a quick disclaimer. And that is that these are just estimates, of course, that we're going to talk about. And we're mostly focusing on accommodations, um, your food costs, including grocery and dining out, and also like kind of transportation. Now, there's a couple things that we're not going to talk about, and that is going to be the cost for like things like visas, whether you're doing a nomad visa or anything like that, or local medical insurance or other kind of common expenses. So this video is kind of meant for people who are kind of doing a tourist visa and spending like less than three months in the Czech Republic. Um, all of the information in this video is from our own experience, as well as a little bit more research that we've done, um, including things from Nomad List or even Numbio. So your costs will definitely vary, but this should give you a pretty good uh, kind of a base to figure out whether uh, what you can use the budget. So let's start with accommodations. So when you're planning your budget for the Czech Republic, uh, you can look at cities like Prague or Brno, like where we stayed at. Mm -hmm. And apartment rentals can range anywhere from 800 to around 1500 per month. So that takes in factors of where you stay, if you're closer to the city center outside, uh, maybe more on the countryside. And also that's a reflection on your, all of your utilities, like water, electric, internet, uh, is going to be included. And these are all furnished rentals. Right. So like renting a furnished apartment, um, is definitely going to be a little bit more expensive than well, usually quite a bit more expensive than if you're like doing a full-time lease where you're paying for your electric and all that, that extra stuff later on and furnishing your place. Mm -hmm. And this is so basically we're talking about like short-term rentals, uh, things like Verbo or booking or, you know, Airbnb, uh, or Flatio as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, and also you're, you're better off with that than say like a hostel or even hotels because those can get quite a bit more expensive as, as we've uh, just found. So to give you some examples, uh, in Brno, uh, a one bed wood bath apartment, a fully furnished apartment, um, can average is somewhere between 800 and 1200 dollars, like right around the city center. Um, whereas in Prague, you can find a one bedroom, one bath uh, apartment, you know, short term apartment like that for more like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, or even more, depending on you know how fancy you want to get. <laughs> um, and that's also kind of like near the city center. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're exploring some of your short-term rental options, uh, you can also look at real estate agents too, because a lot of those agents can help you find. I don't know about a one-month lease, but they might be able to help you find shorter-term leases. So you have to check on that. But also, we usually look on those online platforms like the ones I mentioned already, because um, those will give you a really a much, much better idea about what kind of prices you can expect, especially during the time of year that you're going to be going there, because there is there's definitely some fluctuation in that. And as Joel mentioned, one of our favorite mm -hmm. booking platforms now is flatio.com, and that's kind of been our go-to for booking most of our European stays yeah. lately. And speaking of flatio, they're actually giving uh, viewers and listeners a 10% off code right now. Mm -hmm. And that's 10% off the service fee. So you can just use wandering hearts 10. 
and uh, you can book it through our link. This is not sponsored. Yeah, it's not sponsored. <laughs> but it is an affiliate, and uh, it is good until April 30th, 2024. So you can scan this code here, or you can use the link in the description as well. So we mentioned other accommodation styles like hostels. Now, hostels used to be a really good option for people, especially solo travelers. Um, I know my sister and I, when we did our backpacking trip, oh gosh, a long time ago. Um, a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, you know, we did a lot of hostels, um, but they're not nearly as affordable as they were back then. Obviously, there's, you know, inflation since then. But even when you factor that in, uh, they seem a bit high for us. So, like, for instance, in... Um, in Prague, you're looking at prices that range from anywhere from $35 for like a dormitory style. So you might be in a room of eight or 10 people mm -hmm. um, or up to like $100 for a private room with a shared bathroom even. So generally speaking, you can get a much better deal with a short-term rental if you're mm -hmm. doing that. And if you're like a couple like us, then that's pretty much, an, it makes it really hard <laughs> to, do, to do that. Next up, we're going to cover food and dining out costs. So food in the Czech Republic, in our opinion, <laughs> is really, really good. And so is the beer, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think is Czech Republic is known for. The wine is actually really good, too. So in general, we usually have all of our breakfast and lunch mm -hmm. in our apartment just to save money. Mm -hmm. We usually just do like yogurts or, I don't know, cereal or bagels or something. Yeah. Keep it really simple. And then try to go out a couple times during the week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you find groceries pretty reasonable in the mm -hmm. Czech Republic. There's markets that you can go to. We know there's a lot of markets that you can go to in Prague as well as Brno. There was a really nice one in Brno mm -hmm. uh, that I remember we kind of walked around and looked at selling seasonal foods and local produce. So that's where you're going to get your, your better price breaks on, on food. Mm -hmm. As far as like pricing is concerned, um, when we were in Brno, we were actually there for a travel conference. So we were actually eating out quite a bit, um, more than we normally do, yeah. uh, more than our usual, you know, a couple times a week. And in Prague, uh, we end up actually doing a lot of like delivery to our apartment, uh, just because we were doing a lot of, we were working a lot and everything else. Um, and we got, we had, we were sick for a little bit as well. But, um, and then we also went out a few times to some of the restaurants as well, which is really nice. Um, now, based on like groceries for breakfast and lunch uh, and how we usually spend, uh, you can expect to pay around four to $500 a month for two people. Now, as far as dining out and restaurants are concerned, during our time in the Czech Republic, uh, we averaged about 20 to $38 for two people, and that's at like a mid-range restaurant. And that would also include uh, like some kind of a drink, like beer or wine as well, and of course, all the taxes and tips. And if you're looking at like kind of the more inexpensive restaurants, which is kind of what we do for maybe lunch or something mm -hmm. like that, um, those ran about $12 to $16 US for both of us. Again, with the, maybe a drink as well. So it, really reasonable. Yeah, pretty good price, yeah. um, especially when you compare it to the United States or mm -hmm. Canada or something like that. Yeah. Um, of course, there's ways to like save even more money if you're looking to do that. Um, you can always check for like specials at restaurants and things like that, or um, even, you know, looking for like little kiosks in uh, some street food sometimes is, can be a, a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about public transportation in the Czech Republic. It's actually really good. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of trams, uh, trains that you can take. And during our time there, we took the tram and the, and the train. <laughs> yeah. A couple of examples are you can expect to pay around $13 to $18 for a second class train ticket uh, for travel throughout Czech Republic. If you want a first class ticket, it's usually about $27 to $37. So we took the train from Brno to Prague, and for both of us, that was a total of $33. So not bad. Yeah, yeah, really reasonable. Uh, now, as far as public transportation passes as well, some of the cities will have like uh, month-long, week-long, daily passes that you can get to. Um, we didn't actually end up doing any passes, uh, but just to give you some ideas on some of the prices for all that, like in Prague, for instance, if you just do like a like a pass, it's about a dollar for a 30-minute ticket. For a 90-minute ticket, you're looking at about a dollar 37 US, which is going to vary a little bit with exchange rates. One-day passes are going to run you uh, just under five bucks. 
and a three-day pass runs you about just a little bit over $13 US. Um, and then a one-month pass, which is actually a pretty good deal here, is a little over $23. So if you're going to be there for a month, it's super easy to do that. Yeah. And it works for like all of the different... Like, like buses, Yeah, buses, trams. metro, tram, all that kind of stuff, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. Now, as far as Bruno is concerned, um, very similar pricing. Um, there is like a 15-minute ticket for about 90 cents. A 60-minute ticket will run you a little over a dollar. And a 90 minute ticket will run you $1.15. We couldn't find out if there was any month long passes or anything like that. I'm sure so there, is. there might be. <laughs> we just didn't, we couldn't find any information yeah. on that. Now, as far as taxis and ride shares, it's really easy to get taxis, ride shares there. Um, the one that we use all the time, we're in uh, Czech Republic, is Bolt. Uh, they're actually a lot of countries in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. They're just like Uber, um, except way cheaper. Um, so for instance, like a short ride will run you like about maybe two kilometers or about a mile rides about five bucks. It's not much more if you go a little further, for instance, like a little bit longer ride, like a 19 kilometer ride, which is about, I think just a little under eight miles, uh, like from when we went to the airport, uh, that would cost us $15 and 60 cents. So that's like all, everything included. So, I mean, again, really, really reasonable. Yeah. So the cheapest way to get around, and in our opinion, probably the most fun way is by walking. And Prague and Brno are both really, really walkable cities. I mean, you can just walk for hours and hours. And <laughs> it's also, yeah, free, free entertainment too, if you just like to walk and see architecture and churches and all kinds of stuff to see, so. Yeah, and you stumble across different things as well, like little cafes you know, or little hidden gyms in different places. So mm -hmm. it's just fun to get lost and explore. And before we continue, we just wanted to ask real quickly that if you're getting some value out of this and you're finding this helpful, hey, be sure to show it with a like, or you, you can also subscribe. Um, and you can find more on our website, wanderinghearts.com, as well as signing up to our newsletter, where you can get weekly tips about living an abundant lifestyle through full-time travel. So now that we've gone over some of the main costs that you can expect living in the Czech Republic, uh, let's go over some of the kind of the, the smaller uh, things that you're going to spend money on, a few examples, and that's going to be your mobile phone and data. Mm -hmm. So local SIM cards can be found pretty reasonable. A physical SIM from Vodafone, so you can get 20 gigs of data with unlimited calls for about 130 minutes out of network calls is around $28 and that's for 30 days, and that includes SMS text as well. An eSIM, mm -hmm. which is what we're actually going to be using mm -hmm. soon, <laughs> once yeah. we leave the country again, uh, it'll run you about $22 for 10 gigs of data over 30 days. Of course, another alternative is to just use your phone plan from the States uh, and, and add like an international package or something like that on there. Uh, those can get really expensive, especially when you're looking at like a month long stay or longer. Um, we used to do uh, T-Mobile. Uh, they have like a magenta plan. Mm -hmm. uh, they get some new plans as well, but they have a lot of international travel. It's really good because it works really well and everywhere you go, mm -hmm. it just works. <laughs> and depending on how big of a plan you get, you can actually get quite a bit at like five gigs of data, like high-speed data as part of your plan as well. Problem is it's also really expensive um, and it keeps getting more expensive. So. Um, that is an option for you, but we find it's just probably easier just to get the eSIMs if your phone is capable or do a physical SIM when you, trans uh, when you travel. Um, but to make that work the best way, you kind of have to have unlocked phone and then uh, you might have to do some other stuff like porting your, your phone over to like a Google Voice account or something like that too. And another thing too is if you're curious about like internet speeds, uh, we've actually found that the Czech Republic has pretty good and very consistent speeds as well. Um, we were getting anywhere from like 40 to 100 megabytes down with speeds of 20 to 50 up pretty consistently everywhere we went, um, as well as a lot of the cities also have a lot of, there's a lot of public Wi-Fi available too, which is also super convenient. Yeah. If you're into nightlife or looking at going to some pubs, Czech Republic is definitely the place to take advantage of this. So in Brno, we actually went out quite a bit. It's like Joel said, we were there for a travel conference. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were with a lot of people uh, during the day and at night meeting up with friends. Um, so drinks there cost 
anywhere from two to three dollars for a beer and a glass of wine was about three to four dollars. Yeah, yeah, so really reasonable. And this is at, like at a restaurant or like you said, a, at a pub or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go cheaper, you can, of course, just go to like a grocery store or something and you can get stuff for about yeah. half that price. Uh, there's other things to do as well. And mm -hmm. just to give you an idea, like some like museum tickets or things like that, um, like a lot of the historical landmarks um, offer discounts on certain days if you're trying to save a couple bucks. Um, but it, most everything else is pretty reasonably priced. Uh, just a couple examples. Uh, like when we went to the, the Spielberg Castle in Brno, uh, I think it cost us like $5 mm -hmm. to get in uh, yeah. each. And then the Vivelli Castle, if I'm saying that right, um, which is another kind of cool one in, in Brno. And that was like maybe eight and a half dollars per person as well. Yeah. So and that was the one that we took the ferry ride through yeah. the Brno Reservoir. We took the, the ferry ride to that one. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. So there's lots of cool things like that you can do. And of course, uh, there's lots of free stuff you can do too. You can walk, there's hiking. Um, the Czech Republic is known for a lot of, apparently a lot of biking there because of a lot of the trails and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, but there's also like passes that you can get to, like we talked about. Um, just as an example, like there was a Brno pass mm -hmm. and it was, I think, good for three days. Yeah. And it was like 20, 23 bucks, I think. Yeah, $23.92 $23. per person. That's a three-day pass in Brno, and that gets you to a whole bunch of sites right. uh, that you can you can see. I think it said like the top five sites in Brno, and then I know there's a whole bunch more. So uh, I think that's definitely worth it. Yeah, and I think Prague has got something similar as well. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely like cool things like that that you can do if you're wanting to go see a bunch of stuff. Um, like I said, the outdoor activities are a lot of those to do. Um, we did one cool thing, and which I highly recommend, uh, which was the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, the Puntva Caves. Uh, but it was about $13.5 and it's a cool cave system. There's tons of cave systems um, through the Czech Republic. Yeah. Um, but you can also find a lot of other cool things to do, like on Viator or Get Your Guide. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we'll have some links in the description uh, if you want to check that out. Um, just to get some more ideas of what you can do if you're trying to plan for your month in the Czech Republic. So we're gonna end then with an estimated monthly cost for you. And like we said, this is just kind of based on our experience and kind of the research that we've seen online. It can run you basically around $1,900 uh, for short-term apartment, eating out about once a day, groceries, and then also local transportation. And that's for uh, full-time travelers like us, yeah, like, uh, for two people. Yeah, for a couple. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you're more on budget traveler, you can definitely get away with a little bit less. Um, I would probably estimate somewhere between $1,600 and $2,300, kind of depending on accommodations and lifestyle, that you know, like how often you want to go out. Yeah. Like we went out a lot and that was mostly, again, because of the travel conference mm -hmm. and then we were six, we had to get like food delivery and stuff like that a few yeah. times. So adds up. Yeah. Um, but if you're a solo traveler too, uh, you can expect to pay somewhere maybe on the low end, probably not much lower than 1200, somewhere between 1200 and $1,900 or more. Uh, just because again, those accommodations are gonna kind of get you and you know, you don't get really much of a price break for being one person. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Unless you're in a dormitory, which, which is probably not the most ideal thing to do. Mm. Another thing that we want, we didn't really include, but it's something that we always do every, everywhere we travel, and that is we have some kind of a travel medical insurance. Um, we're actually using one through Safety Wing. Um, there's plenty of them out there. Safety Wing is the one that we've been using, and we've had pretty good luck with it. Uh, and also like a VPN. And again, we use like a Surfshark VPN, but mm -hmm. there's a plenty of other ones that you can try. They're all pretty, pretty comparable. Um, we like that because it just keeps our data safe um, while we're traveling, especially if we're doing banking and things like that. Um, or if you just want to like relax and Netflix and chill or, or something like that too. Um, we are affiliates for both of those. So um, if you use those, we appreciate it. Um, but again, those are things we use personally. You can find links in the description too and see if they're a good fit for you as well. So to wrap things up, we think the Czech Republic is actually a really affordable and budget-friendly destination, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're going to plan on spending an extended period of time there. Like we said, our kind of sweet spot when we're slow traveling is one to three months. And yeah, I, we really enjoyed our time there and we hope to go back. 
yeah. eventually. So we hope this gives you a kind of a good idea of what basic costs might be so that you can start to plan your budget if you're a full-time traveler, maybe a remote worker, or you're just maybe looking to um, for a place to retire to. Another thing you can do if you want to help support the channel and support what we're doing here uh, is just by simply sharing this, uh, wherever this is, you're watching this on a video, or if you're listening to the podcast, go ahead and share that with other people. If you're feeling generous, as you, of course, you can always buy us a glass of wine um, or do one of those super thanks if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and we also have like some eBooks that we're working on as well as some merch that we're adding to our store. So you can find all that in the, in the description below. If you have any thoughts or questions, uh, please let us know, share them with us. Uh, what is your experience? Have you lived in the Czech Republic? Let us know, like, did we get anything wrong? Yeah, did uh -oh. we miss something? <laughs> yeah, did we miss anything? Do you think the budget that we kind of laid out is reasonable? Uh, yeah, share your thoughts with us. If you're looking for more practical travel tips or integrating full-time travel or slow travel into your lifestyle, you can head over to our website, wanderinghearts.com, and you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. Happy wondering. Happy wondering. <laughs>